Hello and welcome to a new episode of Jump In Let's Play. This week we are taking a look at the two player game Paris City of Lights by De Vere Games. So join us below as we take a look at the setup and playthrough of the game before we come back up for our final thoughts. See you in a moment. So here we are with the um, setup ready to go for Paris City of Lights. We'll just give you a quick overview of the setup and then we'll dive into a few turns and discuss the how the game is played. So first up we've got our game board itself. This utilises the actual game box, so that is nice and easy set up there. And then around the edge we have eight different postcards which represent different actions that players can take uh, later in the game. We'll quickly go over these, but they'll make more sense uh, as we play through the game. So we'll start here. This one, if you activate this, gives you a street light. That's useful for scoring. This one, if you activate it, then at the end of the game, if you have any leftover tiles that you are unable to place, then you don't lose any points for them. This one here is a purple tile. This one basically is a mixed tile that you can... Um, either player can place their... Uh, buildings on and you use this to place it on one of the opposing uh, players colors this one will allow you to swap a tile with the reserve so there will be a chance that the, not all of these will be used straight away this one is an annex so this one will let you make a building just one square bigger uh, the artist here the painter he will score you points for each visible uh, street light in his zone we have the Small building here, the garden, uh, it just acts as a uh, two-point building. And then this one here will allow you to place your building tile in such a way that it covers up a street light. Each player is then given eight tiles. These tiles will be what we use to create the street. Four action tokens, and these will be used for these here. And seven chimney tokens as well so the game itself is split into two parts the first part is where we are either laying down tiles or picking up these buildings players will keep going until all 16 tiles have been laid and then they'll proceed to the uh, second phase of the game in this second phase will be where players will either be placing their buildings that they have uh, chosen or activating one of the um, action postcards here and then the game will end when all of the action postcards have been activated and players can't place any more of their buildings onto the uh, onto the grid so let's start with this player here they will take this first tile and you can see here it's split into different sections so we've got orange here which this player can use the blue square here which this player can use and we've got purple which is a mixed cobblestone which means that either player can use so we'll put that there and try and make it a bit harder if blue wanted to try and use this any point so blue's turn they will turn their tile over this is a good one for blue so they are going to place theirs up here and now orange, so they're going to carry on with this. Orange will place theirs in there like that. And now for blue, what they're going to do is they're actually going to take one of these tiles here. So they're going to take this tile, place that in front of them. So it is oranges go. So they're actually going to decide that they're going to place one of their tiles. So let's go in there. Like so. And blue... We'll choose a tile as well and we'll just keep going back and forth like that until all the tiles have been laid or players have taken uh, building tiles okay so we've got to the point where all of the basic tiles have been placed we've got two buildings left over that may end up coming into the game with this action here so the player who had uh, played their last of their cobblestone tiles first will take the first turn in this phase and that was orange so they will get to go first so on their turn now they will get to either place one of their buildings one of their available buildings they've got uh, five buildings here or they can place one of these 
on one of these to activate an action postcard. So they're going to start with a tile and they're going to place theirs in here. So you can see uh, what they've done to place it. You can see that there's three orange cobblestones here and there's two purple ones here which are available for either player. So they can fit this in there like so and then they take one of their tokens and put that on there to denote that that is their building. So this player here will now take a look at theirs and they are going to come in here. So again, we've got these blue tiles, uh, blue colored cobblestones here and the purple one here. So that's going to go nicely in there like so. And now back to the orange player. So they are going to place theirs in here. And put one of these on and blue is going to come down where does blue want to go blue is actually going to take this one so he will take this tile he will turn this over to say that it has been activated leaving that on there and he gets to place this on an opponent's uh, coloured cobblestone. So he's going to place that there. So that now means that we are able to use that one, which will be very useful. So it's back to orange. So orange is going to take this one. This is the street light. So we put a token on there and we can place a street light like so. There we go, so this gives this building another street light that it is adjacent to. So we go back to our blue player. They are then going to bring this in here. So let's just take that out so it's not topsy-turvy. And they will place their building there. Now orange is going to It's going to place one of these so it is going to place this one oh interesting stuff here let's place it here and we'll place that on there and then we'll go back to blue and what they're going to do is they're actually going to activate this one so we turn that over add that to it and then they can place this somewhere to activate it as an annex so that makes this building just that one bigger and i'll keep going backwards and forwards until all eight of these have been activated and or players have placed all of their tiles okay so we have laid down all of the uh, buildings that people are able to place and all of the postcards have been activated so we'll now move to scoring so there's uh, a few things to consider when scoring. The first is uh, each individual building, uh, which is the area of the building. And then you multiply that by the amount of um, street lamps that are touching it. So, for example, this one here has got one, two, three, four, five. It's got one street lamp touching it. So that would be worth five points. This one here... One, two, three, four. It's got two street lamps touching it. That would be eight points. Uh, this one here, if we just move him out of the way, you can see we've got one, two, three, four. So that's five times four. That's 20 points there. So you would work out those scores. Uh, you then also take a look at the largest grouping of buildings for each player. So each player would then count up the spaces in each of their buildings. So for example here, we would take a look these four buildings are all touching, so you just merely count the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 points there for that one, whereas blue would have here 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, 11 points there. So you'd work those out. You would then take into account uh, any uh, anything like the painter, for example. So orange had the painter, 
and you'll take a look in his area and see how many visible street lights there are. We've got one, two, three. So that would score him six points there. And then we would go to the leftover tiles and see how many tiles were left over for players. Each player had a tile left over. However, Orange was able to activate the one where any leftover tiles would not go against them. So the blue player will lose points for this tile. You will then total up the points and whoever has the most points is the winner. So that is a... Uh, quick playthrough and guides to City of Paris. We'll go back up top and discuss our final thoughts. See you in a bit. Hello and welcome back up top where we're going to discuss our final thoughts on Paris City of Lights. So first up, I hope you enjoyed that and found it of some use. It really is a lovely game and we'll uh, go into some detail now, discuss why I just like it so much. So first up, is just the visual beauty of the game. There's no denying this is a bright, colourful, vibrant game. Um, everything, there's so much uh, sort of care gone into how the game looks overall, from the cover here to the postcards, uh, even to the rule book itself, you know, the front making it look like a newsletter. Uh, inside, the everything is very clear and you've got this lovely background to it um, the uh, cobblestone tiles just everything about it has been made uh, in such a way to really pop really bring out these like bright colors and lovely kind of um, like evokes that sort of Parisian uh, artwork I'm no artist uh, but that's kind of the feel that it gives to me I mean you just have to take a look at some of these postcards here just to see how pretty this game is. And then that also brings me on to another point with the game, like the postcards, for example. When you turn them over and you get this beautiful artwork on the other side, it just feels like a nice little reward. You've activated the action, uh, you turn it over, there's some nice artwork to look at. And as well with the streets, once you've placed all of your buildings, you have this lovely like patchwork of cobblestone and chimneys and buildings uh, and... Uh, little figurines for example like the painter here it's just really nice to look at once the game is done so the actual gameplay itself I really like how the game is split clearly into the different phases so you've got your setup phase and then you've basically got your playing phase and both are really intuitive really easy to get a hold of um, and almost feel like you're playing maybe two separate games, but they're bundled into one. So that first phase where you're placing these tiles or picking these feels kind of like a strategy game. Like you're trying to set up for the next turn. Uh, how are you going to place these tiles in the best way that it benefits you the most? And how are your, the opponents going to counter that by placing their tiles? So that has a really nice kind of feel to it. And then that second phase where you are placing your buildings, activating these, uh, does feel like the uh, typical uh, tile laying game where you're deciding how these pieces are going to go onto the board. And then you've got the scoring itself, which I really like. I think it's really clean, really nice. If you've played games like um, Sobek or King Domino, for example, then it has a kind of reminiscent effect of that where it's the area of the building times something in this case times the amount of um, street lights that are touching it so i really do like that i think that, that is a nice touch to the game um, the postcards as we said you can vary up in the game so there are more postcards in the box the eight that we had for our playthrough here was just to uh, give you an idea of how they work they're the eight that they tell you to uh, use in your first few games but then they have more here with the appropriate tokens that you can use to vary things up and of course with the variety uh, you have uh, sort of endless uh, gameplay with this because these tiles are always going to be placed in different ways which means that you're going to pick these tiles uh, in terms of different importance to yourself uh, the um, game has an expansion as well so if you are looking to vary the game up a bit more then you can get the expansion which introduces some of the Parisian landmarks 
such as the Arc de Triomphe and the Eiffel Tower that will give you additional effects within the game. Um, so yeah, that is sort of everything about the game. Uh, I think it's just really good, clean fun. Uh, great two-player game, Devere and Tenzin Cosmos, who make their own games and publish Devere over here in the UK, do a fantastic job making two-player games. This one, there's uh, Holmes, uh, Targi, um, Imhotep the Jewel, for example. Absolutely fantastic two-player games that just really, really pop really well for uh, that uh, sort of dueling feel. Other games that I have played where they say it's uh, for two players and up, uh, occasionally you find that these games uh, don't actually work for two players or they do work but you have to compromise on the rules or there's a variant set of rules which means that you're not playing the game as intended, you're not playing the way that it was written. And that just feels like it's taking something away. You're playing maybe a lesser version of the game. Uh, these ones are designed specifically for two players. So everything is poured into that and it does a fantastic job. Conversely, that is also a limitation. This is a two-player game. You can only play this with two people. Um, but... I don't think it really suffers for that. It's what it wants to do. It is a fantastic two-player game. If you want to try this out, we do have this copy now in the library. And we do have uh, copies in stock uh, for sale as well. If you're interested in the expansion, do let us know. We don't have it in at the moment. But if you would like it, we can always place it on order and get it in for you. That was everything for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Any questions, as always, just comment below or visit us at the shop and we'll be happy to help out. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the boardroom.